All right, welcome back, boys and girls, to the drive-through confessionals. We are going to review the homework from section 8.2. Special shout out goes to the deli today. Hungry? Make yourself a ham sandwich. Put some delicious mustard on it if you wish. You guys excited for this drive-through confessional? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's get let's get going. Questions on the homework? Give them to me. Yes. Number 16. Is this the triangle one? Yeah. All right. It says, <laughs> draw a triangle. I like this problem. So I'm just using my straight edge so I don't cheat and use my inner right board. I'll treat this thing like it's old school. Okay? And then it says, create a point on the inside of the triangle anywhere and use that point to construct a similar triangle with a scale factor of 2 to 1. Okay? This is really cool how you do this. I might be screwing this up, but I'm going to try for the first time in my life to use the ruler tool. Oh boy. Oh boy. How do you rotate this thing? Oh, they have the other blue dot. Oh my gosh. Oh no. I don't think I'm going to use this. We'll use the uh, ruler that I have in my hand. It's just not going to show up. So, here's what I do. This is a very simple process. I start, I measure the distance between this point and the vertices. I get 18 centimeters. What's twice 18? 36. So I go up to 36 and I virtually just extend this segment so that the vertex is the midpoint of these two points. Do you follow that? Okay, and then I'll do that three other times. So between there and there is 17. What's twice 17? 34. So I go to that one. From here to here is 16 centimeters, uh, 15 centimeters actually, so I go to 30. And I put it right there and watch, lo and behold, in an amazing feat of dilation, we have a similar triangle whose side length, let's just check it, this one is 24 centimeters. So this one should be, oh my goodness. Okay, number 16. Next question. So, number 17. Oh, I can't reach my book. Can I, can I use your book? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, good. I like this one. So virtually, what's, what is intimidating about this one is the fact that it's in 3D. But you need to think about it in 2D. So this is number 17. Okay, so it seems like we don't know anything about our triangles. Here's something that I've never taught you, because I think we're going to learn it later on. But not only, if these triangles are similar, not only is the ratio between their sides proportionate, but so is the ratio between their special segments. So one of the special segments is called, what's that thing? That's an altitude and a median, right? And we know that that distance, what was the distance here? Five centimeters? We know that that's five centimeters. We also know that this was 300 centimeters. So you're going to be shocked how easy this problem was, okay? The scale factor between the little triangle and the big triangle is what? 5 to 300, which simplifies to 1 to 60. That's our scale factor, okay? Now we can think about this thing in three dimensions if we really want. So this right here is part of a screen. It's part of a rectangular television screen. The dimensions on our little screen, on our projector, were what? Is it 3 by 4? 
Is it the other way around? Okay. Well, the scale factor will hold true. So this screen is going to be similar to the little screen. Oh, no. Okay. Rearrange all this junk. So, 3 times 60 is 180. 4 times 60 is 240. And that is the dimensions of our big screen. And we got all that just simply from the scale factor. Do you get that or not, Soph? Okay, so let's go back over that because it's kind of confusing. The ratio between this little triangle and this big triangle in blue was determined because we knew they were similar. Do you know how I knew they were similar? Since these are both vertical, they're parallel to each other, and that makes all the angles congruent to each other. And now I know that the triangles are similar. Okay, so the triangles are similar. This little piece of this triangle, this altitude of that triangle is five centimeters. The altitude of this triangle is 300 centimeters. So using 5 to 300, here's where I might have lost you. You can simplify that by dividing each side by 5. I got 1 to 60. So now I know that this triangle is 60 times bigger than the little one. Okay? And that's how I multiplied my 3 by 4 to get 240 or 180 by 240. Three times 60 is 180. 4 times 60 is 240. That makes sense? Okay. Next question. Hey, do you guys realize this is how your eye works? Do you know that? We actually see everything upside down and then our retina flips it. So it's exactly how the lens of a camera works. It's exactly how your literally the lens of your eye works. Okay. Alex? 18. All right, good. I like this one. Okay, we've got similar triangles, um, A, B, C, and D, E, F. Okay, talk to me about what we know. Can somebody just tell me what we're given? A is 50? Is that what you said? Okay, what else are we given? D is 2X plus 5Y. Okay, keep going. F is 5X plus Y. Continue. Uh, e is? E is. No, B. B is. Um, 102 minus X. And that's all we're given, right? Okay, so when you see something like this, what algebraic topic are you thinking that we're going to have to use? Okay, that's, that's a little more specific. I was thinking system of equations. And then substitution is a method to get to solve that. So that's excellent, Alex. Whenever you see two variables in a singular expression, you better start thinking systems of equations. Okay? What does that mean? It means we don't have enough. We have too many variables to solve it with one single equation, so we're going to need more than one. The easy equation to come up with in this problem would be 50 equals what? 2x plus 5y. So since the triangles are similar, their angles are congruent. That's how I came up with that fact. The second fact was not as easy. You had to, basically, let's say that this one would be the same as b, so it's 102 minus x. And now my second equation is going to be 5x plus y plus 102 minus x plus 2x plus 5y equals what? Equals 180. Okay? Now before I choose my method, let's clean this thing up a bunch. So 5x minus x is 4x, and 4x plus 2x is 6x. Van, am I doing something wrong here? You better stop me before I make a fool out of myself on the internet. Okay? All right. 
y plus 5y is 6y. And then let's subtract 102 from both sides. And what do you get? Does everybody understand how I went from this complicated equation to this more simple equation? All right, now, 6x. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my veteran status, and I'm going to multiply this whole thing by, anyone know? Negative 3. And look what I'm going to be left with, okay? I'm going to flip this around. So 50 times negative 3 is 150. Negative 150. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. That's why I multiplied it by negative 3 right there. And negative 3 times 5y is a negative 15y. Now we can use the easier method, which is the elimination method. Because when I add these two equations, when I add this entire blue equation to the entire red equation, what will happen? My x's are gone. So you get a negative 9y is negative, hmm, is it 72? Yes, it is. 72. You guys could just put that in your calculator if you wanted to help, but I got it. Divide each side by negative 9, and you get y equals 8, okay? Well, y equals 8, let's just plug it in here. So 50 is 2x plus what? Plus 40. So 10 is 2x. 5 is x. So it's asking us to find, I believe, angle C or angle F. So angle F will be 5 times 5 plus 8, 33 degrees. That's a great, great math problem right there. That is why you take geometry after algebra, okay? Next, 13. number 13. What's that one say, Yes. Is it a picture? Got it. So 8 is to... What says, what's, um, 2x minus 3y. like, okay, I can promise you there's at least two of these on the quiz, okay, here's your strategy, first of all, read it carefully, what do they want us to do, find the ratio of x to y, how do we write that as a fraction? x over y. So on the bottom, when we get done with our algebra, we should have x divided by y equals, okay? Here's your strategy. Get all the x's on one side of the equal sign and get all the y's on the other. You have to do algebra until you get that done. So first, I'm going to cross multiply to get rid of my fractions. So I got a 48x minus a 32y is equal to a 14x minus 21y, okay? Oh, let's keep things positive, so I'll subtract 14x from both sides, and that gives me a 34x. I'll ask, or I will also add 32 to both sides, and that gives me an 11y. Is everybody comfortable with what I just did there? So now I want to get x over y. I'm telling you, you guys are going to get this backwards on the quiz if you don't pay close attention. I want to get x on the top by itself, so let me divide each side by 34. Now I have x equals 11y over 34. I'm almost done. What do I do now? Divide each side by y, and I get x over y equals 11 over 34. That's my answer, okay? Sure. You don't like dividing because it involves fractions. So let's say I'm not dividing by y. Let's say I'm multiplying by 1 over y. I'll multiply this side by 1 over y. 
Okay, well, what's 11y over 34 times 1 over y? It's 11 over 34. The y's cancel. And then what's 1 over y times x over 1? x over y. Okay? Chris, or James, sorry. Right. If, you, if it said find the ratio of y to x, the best way I could explain it to you is you could just do like you normally did and then flip it at the end. Yeah, if, if you did some algebra that led you to finding the opposite of or the reciprocal of what you found, just flip it. But I can tell you from my experience of grading these quizzes, the most popular wrong answer on the quiz on this question will be 34 over 11. So they'll do all the math right, but they'll flip it somehow. Next. Lil? Number 12. Words or pictures? Find the ratio of the fourth proportional. Okay? So the fourth proportional means we just want to make a regular proportion. So the first example, we'll call it 12a. They don't separate it, but they, we're doing two problems here. It says 1 is to 2. We would just say 1 is to 2, like 3 is to x. So x is 6, cross, multiply, and divide. In the second part, you would say 4 is to 5, like 6 is to x. x is 30 over 4, which is that's 15 halves or 7.5, okay? Any other questions on the homework? Fourteen, excellent. Fourteen. Okay. A classic geometry problem here. Okay? We've got a roof. We know that the roof from here to here is how tall? It's eight feet. Are we in feet? Okay, and then it tells you that the slope of the roof is, is it five twelves or something? Yeah. And they, they actually are nice to you. They give you, what's the picture look like? Yep. They give you this little picture here. So you make sure that you do your rise over run properly. Five over twelve, okay? All right, well, what we kind of got to understand is that this angle here, is similar to this angle here. And those are it's because of the Z that's made here. See here, here, and here. Okay? Uh, and then this one then would be congruent to this one for the same reasons. You see that? So then I would say 8 is to, what's the 8 match up with? The 5 or the 12? 8 is to 5 like X is to 12, you get 96 divided by 5, which is 19.2, but that's not the answer. It says, how wide is the roof? That's that entire width, so you got to double that. And the answer, 38.4 feet, which is a, certainly a reasonable answer for a roof. James? Perfect. Boom! That's right. 